Hi, I'm Lil Katie, and I want to document how I'm using a LabVIEW program and a Cognex camera. And the LabVIEW program is controlling, it's triggering the Cognex camera, and it's also getting the data back from the camera. So we've got a LabVIEW program that uh, does, an in, does a um, inspection uh, measuring some forces and there's a Cognix camera that takes a measurement for some distances. So this camera's online, and by default it's starting up online. There is a kind of an older protocol for Cognix. It's their native communication, and it basically uses Telnet to pass commands and to read data. So if you've got the Insight software, you'll want to take a look at the uh, native mode communication. There's a list of commands. The, we'll go through just a couple of them. We'll go through the trigger and then the get value. But you can actually change jobs. You can find out if the system's online or not. There's a lot of, more than you that can be done than what I'm going to talk about here. So the nice thing about the cameras Username is admin and the password is blank by default. So in the, what I've done in LabVIEW is I've created a functional global variable. Multiple commands can be processed by this functional global variable. Um, let's take a look at the code. It always starts with the initialization step. The initialization step takes the IP address and the port number and it makes the connection using TCP IP and it sends command or it sends the text the username uh, admin with carriage return and line feed. It waits just briefly and then it sends the password which again is blank which for this means carriage return and line feed and then it reads the command that was requested. So initialization always happens. So in the case of trigger, um, we'll take a look at the trigger. The trigger can be done using the command SE for set event 8, carriage return and line feed, um, or SW8, carriage return and line feed. SE means set event, event number 8 is the trigger. SW means set event and wait, event number eight. The problem with some cameras, especially the higher resolution cameras, is that an, an SW command can time out and you won't get a result back. So sometimes it's, it's safer to use the SE8 command, but you will have to create an artificial wait instead of waiting for the response yourself. Um, Let's go back to look at how this is used. So in this step in the program, in this state in the LabVIEW state machine, the trigger occurs, we wait 175 milliseconds, and then we use the get result string. The get result string command again initializes, and then it uses the get result string. This is a special string in the Cognex camera. It is, so GV is the command for get value, and get value can be used to read individual cells out of the spreadsheet. Or if you create a format string, that variable name is called job.robot.format string, and then you gotta do a character return line feed. So that sends the get value job.robot.format format string, character return, line speed, waits a little bit, and then it reads out until it gets the character return line feed, and that's the value that's inside of the format string. That needs to be defined in Insight Explorer under communication. So I'm online right now, but you have to create an Ethernet native string. And when you create an Ethernet native string, that whatever you put in to the format output string 
will be the value that is output in the job.robot.format string. And if you put multiple, multiple results into the format string, they'll be separated by commas, which is really handy. That way you don't have to go back and read multiple cells at a time. So just to walk through the functional global variable for the Cognex communication, it, no, a normal functional global variable will only execute the loop one time. The way that this one works is a little bit different. It actually executes the loop three times, and it's controlled by the states inside the state machine. The first thing it does, it always initializes the communication. It always makes a, commu a connection over TCP IP and logs in with the username and password. It reads the command and that's what that's how it decides which state to run in the state machine next. And again, let's let's look at trigger again. It sends the command, it waits briefly. If there is a response back, it will read it. That's what is going on here. Um, and whatever ha whatever happens with that occurs inside the state but all of these states then call the close state so note that the stop for the loop is still false and then it calls the close state the close state closes the connection and it also passes a true to the stop for the loop so this functional global variable is a little different than most in that it is executing three states every time it runs. It's a, it is initialize, then whatever command it's supposed to execute, and then close. It's a little bit different than a normal functional global variable. Uh, let's see here. I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, I think it is. I hope that was helpful.